Hello, I'm the artist Michael R. Zotos, and today is July 21st, 2023. What I want to talk about right now is uh, outsider artistry, and also known as uh, self-taught artistry. Now, there's a big difference between a self-taught artist and an artist who, who goes and is trained, okay? When somebody actually teaches an artist, teaches someone to be an artist, there are a lot of things that are taught, uh, that are learned, okay? Things about surfaces, mixing colors, creating a painting where there's a, a center of attention, um, and creating a situation where, where the eye of the viewer is, is drawn from one point to another, textures, shading, all kinds of things that the, the self-taught artist does not have uh, knowledge of. Okay. Now I understand in today's world with the computer and all, you can go on uh, YouTube and see how to do pretty much anything. But the first question is, you know, you understand why a person who's being trained and, and takes courses in, in, in schooling would be an artist. But why would the self-taught artist, okay, the outsider artist, even conceive of doing artwork? What's, what's the motivation? It's a lot of work. There's a lot to it. Why would they do that? Well, I have the answer for you. The answer is they have a frame of reference from their lifetime. We, meaning me, I, okay, I'll tell you what my frame of reference is. When I was growing up, my family moved a lot, every year and a half to two years, often right in the middle of the school year. I had two kindergartens. I had two um, fourth grades, two seventh grades, okay? And we moved, and each time you move, okay, you're taught by a lot of different people, a lot of different things, and, and you know, teachers will try to teach over what you've already learned because they have to make it stick. They have to teach you something that uh, you already learned different from, and, and also when you li live in different regions, there's a different um, uh, accent, a different way of speaking, and people are trying to teach you all the way down the line and, and this gives you a very broad frame of reference that just doesn't fit um, the, the usual local yokel society that, wherever you're living, and you become a bit of a creator, okay? It's just what happened with me, and also through high school, and wherever we lived, my father had a furniture reupholstery shop in the house, and, and maybe down the street, but a lot was going on in the house with that work also, all the time. And then through high school, I worked in his upholstery shop the whole, all my high school years. And the, you get a broad frame of reference there that, uh, very artistic. And I did learn a lot of that work, but I did not learn to make paintings, okay? And then when I got out of high school, in my young adult years, I did business to business telephone sales work. And at that time, which is probably not the case today, you get, at 19 and 20 years old, I was on the phone um, talking to people all over the country. In one moment, I'd be talking to a business person in Slippery Rock, Arkansas, uh, you yeah, know, Arkansas, and another one uh, a few minutes later in, in Pennsylvania, uh, somebody in Chicago. And this really broadens the thinking and the frame of reference. I deliberately would get into conversations with these people. They were big business people. And um, so later on in life, after I did some business things and I did a number of things, I kind of, you know, I went in and out of, of art galleries and all in the city, New York City. And um, I got, you know, a, a, a glimpse of what was going on in the art world. And I knew that I was a creator and I wanted to create artwork. Now I had always made my spontaneous entity drawings with a pen or a marker on paper, sudden and spontaneous and quickly. And I saw things of that nature, particularly with uh, Keith Haring's work in New York City, but it was the same similar thing, but it was very big, okay? You know, heavy lines on it that I was not doing. And when he went to painting, he, he started with chalk on board. And then when he went to paintings, he could just embellish the lines, make them thicker. And I could see the work. I really couldn't see how he did it, but I saw that he did it. And I knew that mine could be substantial. I was told that. I showed people my, my pieces, and they said, oh, it's like Keith Haring. Oh, it's like Keith Haring. But it wasn't like Keith Haring. It was me. 
I realized that I had something that emanated from me. And that's what I believe every outsider artist, every self-taught artist begins with. You're, you're putting yourself on the surface, but I don't mean a picture of yourself. And I don't mean a picture of your psychology. I mean you're taking your energy, your, your flow, and you put it out, and there it remains, okay? But it's simple. In the beginning, it's always going to be simple because you're not trained, you don't have a lot of knowledge on it. So, there you have it. You take a look at it, you see it. Now, what do you do with it, okay? I'm gonna tell you a little tiny story. I'll go as quickly as I can here. I was showing my marker on foam board work. I like the way marker contrasts to the really bright foam cord. And if it's a bright red or a bright green or a bright blue, as long as you keep it the same color or similar all throughout the, the, the piece, Contrasting that with that white is beautiful. So I'm sitting there with my works, and I even did a little bit in public, not much, not as much as I want to, but um, there's a guy there with paintings, and he was, he was a taught artist of some kind. And what he did was he painted basically a number of, of um, subway cars. People would come into the city, um, tourists, to buy work, and, and they understand that there's you know, subway cars are a factor of, 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 of cities. And he painted four paintings. And each one was different, but they were of subway cars. And there was graffiti on the sides of the cars and all. And he took the image of them and he mailed it out somehow overseas and got back a number of real canvas paintings of each one. Let's, let's say, for argument's sake, two dozen of each. And there's four of them. And then he would take these, each of the individual pieces, and he would put some original work on them. For example, they, the subway cars had little windows in them, and he might draw and paint uh, people's faces, about yay big, nothing big, but you might have four or five faces looking out the windows, and that's an original for that piece. And then he'd, he'd embellish the, the graffiti on the side, you know, put some color to it. And then beyond that, what he would do is, um, He'd do like a scribble, like kind of a bit of a Jackson Pollock's, you know, action painting over the top of it. So it's original and it's his hand in it. And he would sell these. But the point is this. He was selling a lot and I was selling nothing. So I asked him, I said, you know, we're sitting around. I says, you know, you're selling, I'm not. What, what, what's my problem here? And the man says, oh, I know what your problem is. It's very obvious. I said, well, enlighten me, tell me. He says, no. He says, how long you been out here? He says, you just kind of got here. I says, well, six years. He says, that's no time. He says, I've been doing this for 20 years out here on the street. And he says, you haven't done your time. So I was sitting around, we're talking, uh, you know, I'm coming back and forth on the weekends. And I says to the man, I says, well, you know, it's not like I've done nothing. I said, you know, I've been working and I explained some of my real estate transactions to him, which he was all ears. They all are, you know, people who work in the street in the city, you start talking about real estate deals and, hey, you know, I always wanted to do that. So I told him things, it didn't hurt me. So then I got talking at the end of the day and I says, what am I doing wrong? He says, well, you don't have anything in your work. I says, what, what, what do you mean? Okay. And he says, well, it's, it's, it's just empty. He says, you know, you have your line in the mouth and the face, you know, a little bit. He says, but and now I'm going to show you something here, okay? This is similar to what I had, except it has the, the, the marker going all the way around, okay? This is basically some and substance of what I was showing. And he said, you have to put a lot more in it. Okay, so that's the answer. He's right. I see his pieces. They have a lot in it. Okay, now I'm going to ask you something. What are you putting that to make it better? You're looking at it, you know, you see. I have no idea, okay? And that's what happens, okay? Well, as the outsider artist, self-taught, it's kind of like when the caveman first came up with painting or drawing a horse on the wall or whatever it was, okay, on the wall. Once you see it, you can do it. But where are you getting the idea? How are you going to conceive of it? How do you conceive of what to do? 
Well, looking at different things back and forth, here's an example of what I did do at some stage, okay? This is basically that, different shape obviously, but I want to bring it back so you can see the whole thing, okay? And I added color around the top like the marker was, and bright eyes and, and whatnot, and color in here. And so now you have something more, okay? Okay, that's good, that's better. So now you've developed, you've grown, but you've also like geometrically developed. You've created something that otherwise didn't exist. But now what do you do? How are you gonna add to that? How are you gonna make that better? See, each process from the outsider artist is like an entirely new invention. You're reinventing the wheel. Well, I'm gonna show you what I did do, okay? Eventually. We'll set this down for now. Here's that. I took this piece, took pictures of it, had it digitally reproduced, and had it fabricated. This is a fabrication on uh, foam. Uh, it, it's coroplast. It's that, that stuff that they make signs for, for. They put them out on the highway. I wanted something to put out on the highway that people can steal. Okay? Now, notice how I just added dots to that. Okay? And I colored this up a little different. But look at, it's, 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 there's something more here. And then from there, I went to something else. I added more dots of different color, which is here. Okay, you can see it's the same exact image, but I added, now I have two different colored dots. I'm gonna put this up close, because what happens with the camera is you can't see the colorings of things. And then when I look at it later to edit and, and make the DVD to put on YouTube, I can notice that. But here we have a, a few different colors, okay? And that's something. Then from there, what do you do? You wanna make that better? Well, it's good enough, it's great, and it's forever. In other words, I can always look at this, no matter what I create, shape, size, what type of material I do it on. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do much on this, this, this chloroplast, okay? I can show you that, but you always have this to look at to review and it came out now here's more of a final stage first of all the space between the dots that's better but there's also these two three four five dots are bigger than the rest and each one has a circumference that's a a, a uh, alternative color okay a contrasting color there's something further that I want to point out here, okay? An outsider artist has certain abilities, certain skills that a lot of people don't have. And that is the ability to actually put their pieces out there on display consistently and in a sense curate the area. 